Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to continue on in the One Year Bible. If you are new here, we do these every Thursday, or at least we try to. And we are going to read in Exodus 30, 11 through 31, 18 today. Then the Lord said to Moses, When you take a census of the Israelites to count them, each one must pay the Lord a ransom for his life at the time he is counted. Then no plague will come on them when you number them. Each one who crosses over to those already counted is to give a half shekel according to the sanctuary shekel, which weighs 20 gerhads. This half shekel is an offering to the Lord. All who cross over those 20 years old or more are to give an offering to the Lord. The rich are not to give more than a half shekel, and the poor are not to give less. Can you make the offering to the Lord to atone for your lives? Receive the atonement money from the Israelites and use it for the service of the tent of the meeting. It will be a memorial for the Israelites before the Lord, making atonement for your lives. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a bronze basin with its bronze stand for washing. Place it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and put water in it. Aaron and his sons are to wash their hands and feet with water from it. Whenever they enter the tent of the meeting, they shall wash with the water so that they will not die. Also, when they approach the altar to minister, by presenting a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash their hands and feet so that they will not die. This is to be a lasting ordinance for Aaron and his descendants for generations for the generations to come. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the following fine spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much that is 250 shekels, of fragrant cinnamon, 250 shekels of fragrant calamus, 500 shekels of cassia, all according to the sanctuary shekel, and a hin of olive oil. Make these into a sacred anointing oil, a fragrant, fragrant blend, the work of a perfumer. It will be the sacred anointing oil. Then use it to anoint the tent of the meeting. The Ark of the Covenant Law, the table and all its articles, the lampstand and its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils and the basin with its stand. You shall consecrate them so that they will be most holy and whatever touches them will be holy. Anoint Aaron and his sons, sons and consecrate them so that they may serve me as priests. Say to the Israelites, this is to be my sacred anointing oil for the generations to come. Do not pour it on anyone else's body and do not make any other oil using the same formula. It is sacred and you are to consider it sacred. Whoever makes perfume like it and puts it on anyone other than a priest must be cut off from their people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take fragrant spices, gum resin, ancha, and gal galbanum, and pure frankincense, all in equal amounts, and make it a fragrant blend of incense, the work of a perfumer. It is to be salted and pure and sacred. Grind some of it to powder and place it in front of the Ark of the Covenant law in the tent of meeting, where I will meet with you. It shall be most holy to you. Do not make any incense with this formula for yourselves. Consider it holy to the Lord. Whoever makes incense like it to enjoy its fragrance must be cut off from their people. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezazel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God with wisdom with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engrave 
in all kinds of crafts. Moreover, I have appointed Oholiab, son of Ahishamach of the tribe of Dan, to help him. Also I have given ability to all the skilled workers to make everything I have commanded you, the tent of meeting, the Ark of the Covenant law, with the atonement cover on it, and all the other furnishings of the tent, the table and its articles, the pure gold lampstand, and all its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offerings, and all its utensils, the basin with its stand, and also the woven garments, both the sacred garments for Aaron, the priest, and the garments for his sons, when they serve as priests, and the anointing oil and fragrant incense for the holy place. They are to make them just as I commanded you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, You must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come, so you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. Observe the Sabbath, because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it is to be put to death. Those who do any work on that day must be cut off from their people. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day is the day of the Sabbath rest. Holy to the Lord, whoever does any work on the Sabbath is to be put to death. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it for generations to come as a lasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. When the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the covenant law, the tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God. We're going to read Matthew 26, 47 through 68. While he, Jesus, was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and stuck, struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? In that hour Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caphias, the high priest where the teachers of the law and elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am to, to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? 
Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Now we're going to read Psalm 32, 1 through 11 of David Ameskil. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from the trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel with you my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by a bit and a bridle, or, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing all you who are upright in heart. I'm going to read Proverbs 8, 27 through 32. I, wisdom, was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the depth, deep. When he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. So that's going to do it for this week in the One Year Bible. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you have, please consider liking this and maybe sharing this with your friends would be nice. And hope to see you next week.